In this video, I'm going to show you how to compute a simple numerical expression using the order of operations. Uh, so what is the order of operations? Uh, exponentiation has the highest order. So we always do that first. So if there is no exponentiation, then we do multiplication and division in the order that they appear from the left to the right. And if there is no multiplication and division, we do addition subtraction in the order that they appear from the left to the right. Now, this default order of operations can be changed if we have grouping symbols such as parentheses and brackets. Uh, the rule for grouping symbols is anything inside of grouping symbols has to be performed first. Um, and if there's another pair of grouping symbols, then that has to be performed first. So we find the innermost set of parentheses or brackets, and we work through the expression from inside out. Also, it's worth mentioning that if you have a radical uh, absolute value or division with the long division bar, the expressions inside of the radical, inside of the absolute value, and in the numerator or denominator of the division has to have to be treated as if they had parentheses around them, meaning they have to be computed first. So when we look at our problem, what we see here is the giant division bar with absolute value expression on top, radical and logarithm on the bottom. So what's inside of the absolute value, what's inside of the, of the radical and logarithm have to be computed first. So let's look at the radical, I'm sorry, absolute value. And there we see another parentheses. So we have to do negative 8 minus 6 first. What's negative 8 minus 6? It's negative 14. So here we write the result of that operation and everything else remains intact. Now inside of the absolute value we don't have expono exponents so we have to focus on multiplication or division. No division so we have to perform this multiplication. What's 3 times negative 14? It's negative 42. Again, now inside of this absolute value, there is nothing but subtraction. What's 13 minus negative 42? It is 55. So only after we performed all the operations inside of the absolute value, only then we can take absolute value of 55, which is 55. Next, we're going to focus on the radical. And what do we see inside of the radical? And we basically start all over again. Uh, inside of the radical, we see there are exponents and difference. So we do exponents first. What's 13 squared? 169. What's 12 squared? 144. We've done exponents. Check if there is multiplication. There is no multiplication, but there is subtraction. So what is 169 minus 144? It is 25. And only then we can take the square root of the result, which is going to be 5. Uh, now we have to focus on the logarithm. And to find the log of 64 base 2, it's the same as answer the question 2 to what power is equal to 64. And we should know that 2 to the power 6 is equal to 64. Therefore, log of 64 base 2 is 6. So this is the only way to figure out that log of 64 base 2 is 6. So after we figured out what's the absolute value, the radical and the log are equal to, then we can take those values and put it back 
in to replace their corresponding expressions. So instead of the absolute value we put 55, instead of the radical we put 5, instead of the log we put 6. And we have a very simple um, expression here. We have a fraction, we work numerator denominator first, nothing to do in the numerator, focus on, on the denominator, so we end up with the answer. The answer is 5. So this expression is computed, the answer is 5.